all right what's going on guys so we've posted a video the other day where i tied a snail knot just kind of b-rolling the video and i've gotten a lot of questions actually over the past year couple of years haven't gotten a ton on like each video but on every other video or so i keep getting questions about how to tie a certain knot snail knot which knot i'm tying i get that a lot i made a video a few years ago where but it was like one of my first ever youtube videos whenever i had a terrible camera i'm still pretty bad at filming myself but back then i was even worse i'm gonna take y'all through the knots that i tie today pretty much i tie three knots all the time i even for like a drop shot, I tie the same knot I do on a jig. I just have, you know, a couple extra tag ends. And the knot that I tie for fluorocarbon is called a double pitson. That's one that I get asked that a ton. Which knot is that? What do you call that? My marshals are always asking me. If I have a co in the tournament, they're always asking me. If I'm fishing with a buddy sometimes, they'll even ask me. It's called a double pitson. There's a really good video on it online, but I'm probably about to try to make one that's also really good, but it might not be quite as good as the other one that's online. But... I'm gonna take my little ace jig right here and I'm gonna show y'all how I tie this on if I can find a pair of scissors. So excuse me, handy dandy scissors. So I've got it tied on already. This is a jig I've actually caught a bunch of fish on. Come on, focus, focus. I got it on my face. So I gotta put my hand up like a, doing some kind of tutorial. This jig has caught a ton of fish actually, a whole bunch. So I'm gonna try to show y'all the exact way that I tie this knot if I can keep that in focus. So. Bounce back. Bounce back to focusing on me. Let's see. I'm going to cut this knot off. This is 20 pound Sunline Shooter that I, it's like the line that I keep on the HGA at all times. I keep it on 7 foot 3 point blank. Heavy, fast. And then if y'all are questioning about that, it's a Shimano Metanium 8 to 1. So I'm going to blur my face now and try to show y'all how I tie this jig. So see if we can make it work. Let's see. Let's see. Okay, it's in there. I always come in over the hook don't know if it makes any difference at all that's just the way that i come in come on come on come on it's on my hand focus focus okay come in over turn it around run it right back through come on still got a little squiggly part okay take this up yeah, i got a loop on one side and a tag in and a main line on the other up oh, it caught my face the camera caught my face I got a loop on one side and a tag end and a main end on the other side. Here's the loop right here in this hand. So I wrap it around my right finger, the line and the tag end right here on my right finger. Got the loop on my left finger. Drop the jig on the floor. Drop the jig on the floor. I tie this knot a hundred times a day, but I'm holding it outside of my comfort zone. Okay, jig back. Come on, focus. Focus on the jig. Okay, line through. Turn it around, run it back through, just like most people do with like a Palomar knot, improved clinch, bunch of knots where you just run it through twice. Come on, okay. Give me a little bit of slack. Get back, okay. <clears throat> loop, main line tag in, wrap it over. So now I made a loop with the line. I've got the tag, I've got the loop over here in my left hand. Wrap it around three times. One, two, three run it through the hole you made on top it's very important to go through the hole that's up here on the very top and i'm gonna explain that to y'all in just a second pull it out wet it a little bit and then pull it down it all down what that does is gives you three tag ends i guess i got it close to my face gives you three tag ends to cut Now, the reason I use this is because whenever I go through, whenever I take that loop and put it through the top of the knot like that, on that hole that's on the top, it pulls itself down and the part that's wrapped, you know, connects directly onto the line tie and the part that's going through itself is on top of the knot instead of underneath the knot. So whenever you set the hook, it cinches down tighter, whereas if you tie a Palomar knot, it wraps around itself. So whenever you set the hook, it'll actually cinch down tighter and burn the line that's inside the other line. Now, if you have no problem with breaking off a Palomar knot on fluorocarbon line, do not change. I'm not telling you to change if you're not having problems. Don't. There's no reason to change. But I was having a ton of problems whenever I first started using fluorocarbon line. I had a co-angler tell me, hey, try this knot. I, he got him to show me how to, how to tie it after we was off the water for that day. And I started trying it after that, after the tournament. I didn't try it during the tournament, but I tried it after the tournament. And to me, it made a huge difference. It made an entire world of difference. So, 
Moving on to the next knot. This is the most popular knot. I only tie it on braid though. So right here I've got a Killer Gill Color Pro Pop and Drive. And I'm going to show y'all exactly how I tie a Palomar knot, which is the simple knot. Super simple. I only tie it on braid pretty much. Every once in a while I'll get lazy and tie it on fluorocarbon and usually break one off. But that's, that's you know, to be expected. So same way. Run it through. Run it back through the, the eye. So I've just like earlier, I've got a loop on one side, I've got the tag ends in my left hand, and I always switch hands. I like to have the tag end and the main line in my right hand, and then have the loop in my left hand right here. So you just tie an overhand knot, that's all you do, cross over, just like you're trying to tie the most basic knot you learned at the Boy Scouts, and then you turn, put the line, put the frog through the loop that's on the that came from tying the overhand knot, and that's it. Wet a little bit. I even wet it with braid. Cinch it down the best you can. I take it and cut me a little bit longer of a tag in than most people. And then I'll actually take that tag in and burn it with a lighter so that the tag in does not free and actually weaken the knot. So now that Hunter's here, we might stop the camera and check the focus and see if the focus is good because I do not believe it's been good at all. So give me one second. All right, so now I'm gonna show y'all the knot that I tie every time I'm flipping. Y'all see me flipping a ton, whether it be fluorocarbon, braid and grass, whatever. This rider here, I actually have 22 pound fluorocarbon, and I have the 3 alt Gamakatsu G Power Hook. It's a really new, new hook that is one of the most highest demand hooks on the market right now. Let me show y'all. One of the most important things with snailing the hook is right here underneath the line tie, right where my thumb is, it needs to be soldered and very, very smooth, or else your snail knot is going to be weakened if there's any kind of a rough edge around that. So you want to be really... Well, you know, sure, whenever you're snelling the hook, that you're using a really high quality hook that's soldered right here and, you know, very smooth for your knot. So, you just turn it just like this. You run the line in over the hook point through the hook, through the line tie. So, over the hook point, that way it'll pop out correctly. Give yourself a little bit of slack. Lay the slack down the shank of the hook just like I did just there. Fold it over, make yourself a loop. And then right there at the bait keeper, you want to, you know, roll it around upwards cascading upwards i'll do it anywhere from seven to nine times sometimes if i'm flipping 25 really big line i'll only do it you know five times or so let me get that back in focus so you can see me rolling it up the hook fix it up make it real pretty all right so i, I did it like i don't know six or seven times right there then you you got your line tie that was coming your tag in that was coming off right here come on show focus focus all right there you got a loop and the tag in. You run the tag in through the loop, pull it down the shank of the hook, pull your main line, wet it a little bit, pull your tag in, and then pull your main line one more time, and then it'll get in place. Let me cut the tag end off. I'll just leave the tag in and then show y'all what it does. So right there, if you can see, it's a half ounce Titan tungsten. Whenever I set the hook in the roof of that fish's mouth, it's going to kick that hook up every single time. It's going to kick it up outwards with the hook point kicking out. So if you can see that, that is why I tie snail knot whenever I'm flipping. There is mixed reviews. Even on the Elite Series, there's mixed reviews on the snail knot. Some people tie it. Some people don't. Personally, I tie it. But, I, I, you know, I've lost fish flipping. You know, in the last tournament I fished, I actually lost a bunch of fish flipping. So, I mean, sometimes you go through spells where you just lose a bunch. I feel like I lose more whenever I don't snail. So, personally, I always snail. That's just what I do. So, that's the three knots that I tie. I've been getting a lot of questions, especially on that snail knot. So, hopefully I did that good enough for y'all to pick it up. Better go watch the video and see if you could actually see it. I might have to refilm it, but appreciate you guys watching. Leave me a comment. You got any more ideas or any more questions that I can make a video about? I'll try to keep up with y'all. Appreciate it, guys. Hit that subscribe button. It helps a ton. And leave me a comment. I don't care if it's positive or negative. We need the comments. Hate comments are probably better because it sparks discussion. So well, whatever you want to do in the comments, I appreciate it. We'll see you on the next video.